Hey guys, this is Kason. Welcome to my new studio. Today I'm going to show you how to breathe new life into your PowerPC Mac and keep your breath fresh at the same time with Linux Mint for PowerPC. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to mintppc.org. Once the website's loaded, click on the most recent release, which in my case is Mint PVC 11. When that page has loaded, you'll find a link to the installation instructions, and that's where you can find the download. From here, you'll notice that there are two links. There's a G3 slash G4 link, and a G5 link. If you have a G5 computer, you're going to click on this link. Uh, if you have a G3 or G4, like I do with this iBook G3, you're going to click on this link. And then just download the installer. It's a really small file because the files are actually downloaded while you're installing it. So the actual installer you have to put on a CD is very, very small. Alright, once that's finished downloading, you're going to want to make sure that you have a blank disk. I've already labeled mine. And then you're going to head over to Disk Utility. You can use Spotlight to search for Disk Utility and it should be the first thing that pops up. Once Disk Utility loads, you're going to want to go to File, Open Disk Image. Now you're going to find the file that you just downloaded. And it's going to start importing it. You might get an error like this, don't worry about it, I got it and it still works fine. Now from there, you're going to want to insert your DVD and then click burn. Now I've already burned mine, so I'm just going to click cancel. But it should only take a few minutes and it's really simple. Now you should see a CD icon on your desktop that says Debian installer slash PPC. Once you see that, you can go to the Apple logo, shut down, and shut down. Once your computer is fully shut down, you can press the power button and hold the C key while it starts up. This boots us into the CD's boot manager. From here you need to type in install space URL equal sign mintppc.org. And then you're going to see a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on on your screen. That's normal, and then we're going to be in the language picker. Here you're going to select your language, and where you live, and what type of key map to use. And it's going to detect your network hardware, which just confirms that you are connected to the internet. Next it pops up with a window telling you that it needs some firmware files, which I did not have a download for, so I selected no. Next it asks which network device to use, and I just chose the first one because that's Ethernet. Next it asks you what you want your host name to be. This isn't really important, it's just the name of your computer and it's going to show up in connected devices on your network. Next it asks for your domain name. If you don't know what this is, you can just make it up. It says to make sure that you keep it the same between all your computers, but I just put my last name. It's not a big deal. Now it's going to ask where you live again, and I find that the first mirror works the best. Unless you've set up a proxy in your network, you can skip this. Now this is the actual download process where it's downloading all the files that it needs. I have this sped up quite a bit because it took about five minutes. So it really just depends on your internet speed, but it took me about five minutes. 
When it's finished downloading, it'll ask you to set up a root password. Uh, the root user is separate from your user account, so you might want to set a different password. And it'll ask you to verify. And then it will ask you for your full name for the new user account. This is not a username, this is your full name. And now it'll ask for a username, I just kept it as my first name. And a password. Now it's going to ask you where your time zone is. I'm in Central. And now it's giving us the options for installing on our disk drive. You have a couple of options. You can either use the largest amount of space or just use the entire disk. I use the entire disk, but you can choose whichever one you want. And it'll ask which disk. I only have one connected. Now it's asking how you want to partition your drive. You can choose any of these. I chose to have a separate home partition, but it doesn't really matter. Now it's getting ready to partition the drives. And it's going to make sure that I do want to save these changes. And it's just going to give me another warning saying that it will erase my drive, and I'm going to say yes. And now it's actually partitioning the drive. And now it's actually installing. This took over an hour, so be ready to wait. At the end of the installation, you get this pop-up with a whole bunch of crazy text that you don't need to read. You can just press continue. It'll do some final checks and another pop-up says that the installation is complete and that it's time to boot into your new system. So all you need to do is just remove the media, the CD, and press continue. The first boot will take a while as it goes through a whole bunch of checks and initial settings, but it will not take this long on a normal boot. All right, so that beep means that it is finished booting. And now I'm gonna type in my username and password and log in for the first time. And there you have it. Linux Mint running on a PowerPC iBook G3. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye.